God bless you, beloved. And happy Saturday. Let me pull you out that glare before I even get started. I pray that this Saturday has been amazing for you. That glare just become looking for y'all. But listen, that just lets me know. That lets us know. Whenever you see that glare, huh? Just just, just visualize that and say, listen, the sun, the 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 the, the, the not the S-U-N, but the S-O-N, he got my back. As long as I believe him, as long as I trust in him, just know that. That, that, that the glare of the spirit of God, the light of Christ, the light of the world behind you is saying, don't, don't be afraid because as long as you believe me, I'm going to back you up. See, that's what that glare means. That's what that glare talking about. Let's turn this way. All right. We bless God. And we just want to be an encouragement today because, because I know firsthand that there are many of you, there are many of us that are dealing with we are literally standing in the face of the improbable and what some would people some would classify as the near impossible there are many of us that i know personally are staring in the face of the improbable or what some would classify as near impossible but then what the spirit of the lord speaks unto us today is faith is not really faith unless it is manifested or revealed Faith is not manifested or given credit to be faith by God unless it is staring in the face of the improbable or the impossible. Faith that is not staring in the face of the unlikely manifestation of what it is we, we believe in God for is not really faith. If we're praying for something that is guaranteed to happen based on what we know naturally, based on what we know naturally, then it's not really faith because we're asking for something that in the natural sense we already knew was guaranteed. Faith, according to Hebrews, the 11th chapter, is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence. It is the evidence. It is the empirical data that God is looking for, for that which has yet to be manifested. Faith that is not staring in the face of the improbable or the near impossible is not credited by God as faith. We speak that right now as an encouragement to those who are dealing with the improbable or the impossible. And that's exactly when God wants you to believe him. We can prove it. If we go to Mark, the fifth chapter, Jesus had just gone over on one side of the sea. When he gets on one side of the sea, see, that's why we need to be filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Don't take for granted that we have got to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. We shall receive, the Bible said, power, and you shall, and you shall receive power, authority given unto you, injected into you from God. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You receive authority from heaven, injected into you by the Spirit of God to be a shifter in the earth. And Jesus demonstrated this. Here comes Jesus, who is on a ship and comes on one side of the sea. And he goes over into the land of Gadara or the Gadarenes and immediately he can't even hardly get off the ship. And there is a demonized man, the demoniac he is referred to in scripture, who, the, who, who up until the arrival, the arrival of Christ, right, of, of Christ Jesus, God manifested in the flesh, up until the manifestation, up until the arrival of Christ in the land of Gadara, the scriptures record that this man they had to bind him with chains but yet the chains didn't work chains and fetters they would literally tie him the way that you would tie a dog on a leash to a post because they didn't want him to harm himself or, or other people they couldn't stop him from harming himself he was so demonized he was sitting here cutting himself and 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 and, and no man combined him the scripture says not with chains but yet soon as jesus was getting off the ship the demons knew that Jesus was coming. They knew he was coming. They knew he was coming. Listen, stop. The spirit of God has come upon you. Those of you who cry out for the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the spirit of God has not come in you so you can just speak in tongues and sound sanctimonious. That's not why he filled us. He filled us because he desires for us to be a shifter. And those of you who, are, I'm talking about a shifter in the earth. And the thing about it is, the enemy wants to keep us ignorant of the authority that God has invested in those of us who believe. What is it? Mark 16, 16, Jesus even spoke and declared and prophesied with over and said, And these signs shall follow them that believe. They shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. 
if they drink anything that's deadly, it's not going to harm them. They shall tread upon serpents and scorpions, for I'm giving them the authority over all of the power of the enemy. Going back to St. Mark, the fifth chapter, Jesus performed the, he was facing the improbable and the near impossible. Everybody that knew this man would have clearly said, no, no, he, he, the, the condition that this demonic is, didn't even tell us his name. This man was known by his condition, not even his name. Oh God, hallelujah. Is she kind of almost shot? Y'all got to excuse me today. We're going to let it out, okay? This man was known by his condition, not even by his name. The scriptures don't tell us his name. The scriptures tell us his condition. He was demonized. And, they, and, and so literally he was known in the regions of Gadara, of the Gadarenes, as the crazy man. He was known as the crazy man. He was known as the lunatic. He was known as the man that wasn't in his right mind. Don't get too close because this man might hurt you. He gonna cut himself and if you get too close, he might cut you. There are people who are dealing with circumstances that have drowned their identity so much that they're not even known by their name as much as they're known by their habit. They're not known by their name as much as they're known by their addiction to, to, to substance or their addiction to, 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 to sexual activity or their addictions, their dysfunction. There are people who are literally known in the gates by their dysfunction more so than anything. But see, that's why Jesus has come. Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. Jesus came literally to, to shift things in the earth. That's why Jesus showed up. He came up, he came to shift what was happening in the earth. That is why Jesus arrived. And so what we want to point out to you is, after Jesus was facing the improbable and the near impossible circumstance, which was to deliver this man. As a matter of fact, when Jesus said to the man, Jesus said, you unclean spirit, leave the man. The spirit said, okay, well, you know, we ain't just one, we're many. For my, our name, he said, what is, Jesus said, what is your name? He said, for my name is Legion, for we are many. For those of you who are familiar over along the courses of history, a legion was classified as, as a gathering of either 2,000, from two to 6,000 soldiers, all right? Just to let you know that demonic forces are not spatially challenged. And many people are dealing with this function today because of demonic activity that Jesus Christ can deliver them from. So we're dealing with this. We're dealing with natural manifestations of a spiritual, natural manifestations of this of dysfunction that have a spiritual root is the way it's to be said. Because this man was clearly demonized and G Jesus cast literally cast the demons out of this man and sent them into a herd of swine as we see the bible records and then when he sent them in the herd of swine they end up not having a home because see demons want a home we're just gonna go where the spirit of god is leading unclean spirits are looking to take residence through open doors in the lives of people so that it can sabotage their lives and sabotage the lives of others that are associated with them and i want to speak the word here it says for those of you who may listen to this and for for for, for years you have been trying to shake the stigma of of, of dysfunction in your life that you haven't even been able to understand because doors that were open or things that happened to you or things that were exposed that you were exposed to the spirit of god says if you would be the lord said if you would just believe on me he that believeth on me as the scriptures have said out of his belly will flow rivers of living water if you will believe the word of the god if you will believe his prophets you shall prosper if you will believe the word of the lord you immediately because of your faith will have access to god's provision of your freedom in the face of the improbable in the face of the impossible all right jesus delivers this man okay god sets him free jesus then gets on the boat and goes on the other side of the sea hallelujah and whereas on one side of the sea jesus was met by a man who had who, who was demonized in the land of the gatherings jesus gets on the ship and goes on to the other side of the sea and is met with a man whose daughter was sick unto death who was a ruler in the synagogue and, and you know and, and and let's oh oh let's stop right there let me tell you life and circumstance is going to happen to you I don't care what your position is in the body of Christ, in the political world, in the, in, the, in, the, in the religious world, in the corporate world, it really doesn't matter. Circumstances will find you no matter who you are or where you are or who you think you are, it really doesn't matter. Here was a ruler in the synagogue, but yet circumstance found its way to touch him. 
touch him. And in this particular case, the way to get to him was his daughter. Jairus' daughter was sick unto the point of death. And this man, listen, I, 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 I never met him, but I bless God for Jairus because as soon as Jesus pulled up on the other side of the sea, this man Jairus fell down to his feet and appeal to Jesus to say have mercy on my daughter for my daughter is sick unto, de unto death by this time by this time he hadn't died then somebody else comes to Jesus that had had an issue of blood so Jesus has the conversation with the man who said please come see about my daughter who is sick and then right after that hallelujah see that's when they come to the fountain come to the fountain hold everyone that thirst let him come and drink jesus wasn't turning them away as long as they came with faith they had access to what jesus carried as long as they came in faith jesus did not restrict or withhold whoever it was jesus would literally he would literally not turn them away so long as they came in faith believing woman that had the issue of blood for all these years was healed of her infirmity in the presence of Jesus Christ. But then one of the servants of the ruler, or one that came from the house of the daughter that was sick and said, listen, you know what I mean? I know you went to see, go see, to get Jesus, to see if Jesus could do something about the circumstance. I hate to inform you, your daughter is not sick unto death. She has transitioned to the point of death. So now visualize, this man came to Jesus because his daughter was sick unto the point of death. But now when the servant came from, from, the, from the house where the girl was, he said, I'm sorry to inform you. She has transitioned from the place of sick unto death. Now she's actually dead. But see, Jesus showed up to the house anyway. And when he got there, he saw that there was tumult and people were crying. And he said, well, why are y'all crying like this? Why are y'all carrying on like this? He said, she's dead. That's what they said. She's dead. And Jesus said, no, she's sleeping. Listen. Listen, listen, when the resurrection and the life who is Jesus shows up, that which looks dead, he can bring to life. But I must tell you what Jesus did, though, and here's where we're going to go with this. What Jesus did, Jesus put the doubters out. Because when Jesus said that she's sleeping and they figured they knew better than him what the circumstance was, the first thing that Jesus did was put the doubters out. That's the first thing that Jesus, what's that? No, I didn't. I was just sitting here waiting on him. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. So that's all right. Cause we're going to keep on flowing. There are those that are sitting in and they're facing a set of circumstances that are just like that that is going from bad to worse and and when you are dealing with circumstances that have gone from bad to worse the word of the lord comes into us saying your faith needs to concentrate it's not that you're not believing god but sometimes when you're believing god you can literally find yourself in the midst of people you can find yourself in the midst of people right you can you can you can find yourself literally standing next to people that will, will laugh you to scorn or not believe as you believe. But because of what it is that you are dealing with, the nature of what it is that you are believing God for, beloved, requires you to evict those that don't believe as you believe. I don't care if they blood. I don't care if they family. When you are believing God for the miraculous, your faith, according to Hebrews, the 11th chapter, is already the evidence. Your faith is already the substance of things hoped for. It's already the evidence of things not seen. However, to have access to this miracle, to have access to this miracle that you believe in God for, in order to get that, your faith needs to concentrate. Your faith needs to focus. And in order for your faith to focus, all doubters, all those who are wishy-washy, must be evicted that don't mean you're hating on them that don't mean you're talking crazy to them that means you are distancing yourself from anybody who would dilute your faith or cause you to believe or cause you to believe that what you are believing for is ridiculous and that the improbable or the impossible cannot take place when you are going into warfare and you are going into battle you cannot go into battle with wishy-washy people who do not believe that the victory is possible because they become immediately a liability. You don't go to war with somebody that doesn't believe that you have the ability to take the territory. And there are territories that you can take by faith. By faith, you can take the territory. By faith, you 150% can take the territory. 150%, you can take the territory. 
But the word of the Lord comes into us today saying your faith needs to concentrate. Evict doubters, evict unbelievers, evict from your presence anyone who doesn't believe as you believe. Your faith needs to concentrate, beloved. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. You don't see it. It don't look like it's possible. It don't look like it's probable. But let me tell you, your miracle is just as close to you as your faith. And that's why the word of God is spoken. Why? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by the word of God. But guess what? The doubt comes by hearing. Doubt comes by the by by way of the mouth of those who are by inspired by the enemy to cause you to believe for less than what God is able to do. Doubt comes by hearing, just like faith comes by hearing. So therefore, you got to be careful when you are believing God and you in the battle. Be careful what you let into your spirit. Keep the keep the gate of your ears, and, and watch even what you say, because death and life is in the power of the tongue. I believe that's Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life is in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. What's the word of the Lord unto us today? Your faith needs to concentrate. We are in the battle, not only for our souls, but the battle for the souls and even the destinies of other people. What we need is for our faith to be in, a, in, the, in, 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 a, in an environment, to cultivate an environment where our faith can grow and can be strengthened. And in order for that to happen, Peter, James, and John are the only disciples that Jesus took up into that room when, he's about to, when he was about to resurrect this young lady from the dead. The miracle was about to happen, but before the miracle took place, he evicted those who were laughing him to scorn when he said, she's not dead, she's sleeping. They laughed him to scorn. Jesus said, all right, y'all going to have to get out. And that's the mentality we are going to take. Anybody that's like, I don't know, I don't know. Listen, you distance yourself from anybody who doesn't have the fire of faith that you have. There is no room for contamination. There is no room for dilution. Your faith needs to concentrate. God bless you. Love y'all.